Digital Signal Processing course. In this course, already you have learned that what are the different elements of the DSP blob diagram. Then you have learned quantization role in ADC as well as you have seen advantages of DSP over ASP. Next, limitations of DSP as well as the applications. We have also seen that sampling and analyzing basics. Why do the sampling will affect the reconstruction? That is also we have seen in the earlier lectures. We have also seen some of the numericals based on the sampling theorem to calculate the Nyquist rate as well as the frequency mapping to convert the analog frequencies into the discrete time frequencies or discrete time signal frequencies so based on this we have seen some of the examples where we are able to convert the x of t into x of n by following the simple substitution that is t will be replaced by n by fs even by identifying the highest frequency component from the given x a of t means the analog signal right now for this case it is 150 so 300 divided by 2 so it will be 150 this 50 by 2 it will be 25 and this will be 50 so 150 will be the highest frequency that's why the Nyquist rate will be 150 into 2 that is 300 hertz up to this point we discussed few numericals let's uh, concentrate on other numerical part also so that is nothing but analytical treatment with numericals <coughs> now this example is slightly similar to that of the earlier one few modification is just included here let's see consider the analog signal x a of t that is 3 cos 2000 pi t plus 5 sin 6000 pi t plus 10 cos 12000 pi t this was asked in the university question paper that's why purposefully this example is taken so when we ca calculate the frequency component for individual part so since this xa of t it is a combination of three cosine waveforms so 2000 pi t means here the component which we are getting will be 1000 similarly for the second case it will be 3000 let me write it here in short that is 3k okay this is 3k similarly for this one it will be 6k okay so this is how the three components are over there with this frequency uh, three frequencies so 6k is nothing but the maximum frequency component so obviously based on this the Nyquist rate will become 6k into 2 that is 12k so that is what done over here three frequency component and the Nyquist rate will be 6 into 2 that is 12 kilohertz because of this criteria obviously now by concentrating on the second part assume now that we sample this signal using a sampling rate fs is equal to 5000 samples per second what is the discrete time signal obtained after sampling now fs is simply changed over here earlier we have calculated the fs based on the given component now they have changed the fs with 5000 samples per second now based on this fs what will be the discrete time signal means x of n this is what we need to calculate based on fs so as we have we know t if x of t i want to convert in x of n then i need to sub substitute t equal to n times ts so this n times ts means it is n by fs so that is what the probable two substitutions which we can use <coughs> so either you go for this or this one right now for this problem statement since fs is given no need to go for this one directly we can proceed for n by fs <coughs> so this is what done so fs is 5 kilohertz so fs by 2 is 2.5 so x of n will be x of nts 
so x of n by fs so wherever you are having the term of t just replace it by n by fs so that is how for the first case it is like this for second part this one since it is 3k by 5k so obviously 3 by 5 Sim similarly here it is 6k by 5k so it will be 6 by 5 now by rearranging the terms this is what our final answer so just rearrange this let's say 2 pi into 3 by 5 n so this can be written as a 1 minus 2 by 5 n okay a later on just 3 cos 2 pi into 1 by 5 n it will be added with 10 cos 2 pi into 1 by 5 n so it will result in 13 cos 2 pi 1 by 5 n so this is how the final solution will be obtained let's concentrate for this okay let's look at the second numerical an analog signal contains a frequency to 10 kilohertz what range of sampling frequencies allows exact reconstruction of this signal from its samples similarly the second bit let's concentrate first of all the first bit what range of sampling frequencies allows exact reconstruction of this signal from its samples it means fs is equal to twice f max has to be calculated so have the faithful reconstruction f max is given as a 10 kilohertz so fs must be greater than or equal to 2 f max so it will be 20 kilohertz so the second part suppose that we sample this signal with a sampling frequency fs equal to 8 kilohertz examine what happens to the frequency f1 is equal to 5 kilohertz now if it is sampled with different sample frequency that is 8 kilohertz so if f fs is 8 kilohertz and f1 is 5 kilohertz so obviously if this is let's say the maximum frequency component then 5 into 2 that is 10 so 10 kilohertz obviously it is less than the sampling frequency so there will be the aliasing so for fs is equal to 8 kilohertz f fold maximum frequency will be what fs by 2 so that is 4 kilohertz but this 4 kilohertz is less than the maximum fre frequency component that is 5 kilohertz which is provided in the statement so that's why aliasing will occur and that aliasing will be obviously at 8 minus 5 means at 3 kilohertz similarly the next statement repeat part b means the same part for frequency f2 is equal to 9 kilohertz so again here fs will be calculated as a 9 by 2 so it will be 9 by 2 means uh, sorry f field f fold will be fs by 2 means it will be 4.5 kilohertz so this f is 9 kilohertz because of the nature of the given frequency and fs is only 8 kilohertz so that's why f minus fs that is nothing but giving the value as a 1 kilohertz so there will be the alias so this frequency component should not exceed the sampling frequency in order to satisfy this particular criteria now let's see the next example an analog ecg signal contains useful frequencies up to 100 hertz what is the nyquist rate of this signal it is quite easier 100 into 2 that is 200 hertz for the first case so it is 200 hertz let's solve for the second in the second case it is asked suppose that we sample this signal at a rate of 50 samples per second means fs is changed what is the highest frequency that can be represented uniquely at this sampling rate so fs by 2 is nothing but the highest frequency so it will be 125 hertz so this is how the two answers which we can get okay now let's look at the next example consider the simple signal processing system shown in figure that is p 1.11 the sampling periods of the adc and dsc 
R T is equal to 5 millisecond. So for this one, it is 5 millisecond, and for T dash means for the DAC, it is 1 millisecond respectively. Determine the output Y A T means output of the DAC. It will be in the form of analog signal. Similarly, output of the ADC will be in the form of discrete signal. So that's why it is X of N. If the input is X A of T is equal to 3 cos 100 pi t plus 2 sin 50 pi t. So if this is what the signal, the post filter, re post filter removes any frequency component above fs by 2. So that is what the use of this post filter. Now let's uh, see how to find out the y a t. Determine the output y a t. We will just proceed with the stepwise analysis of this particular block diagram so here x of n has to be calculated from x of t with the 5 millisecond sampling time okay so for converting x of t into x of n just follow the simple equation n t small t will be replaced by n by fs so this is how it will be replaced so fs will be nothing but 1 upon ts so for the first block so sampling time is given so based on that sampling time the fs will be 200 so this is how it will be replaced in the equation and we are getting x of n in this particular format so after solving it we will get this format so similarly here also we are replacing the t by n by 200 now this is the part where actually we are going to concentrate on discrete signal to analog signal transformation so that's why what is happening here n has to be converted into t so equation which we, we used here t is equal to nts now it has to be used in a reverse way means n will be replaced by t by ts so that is what done here so t by ts so it is one so in the equation just put the value as a t by ts so it is 1 millisecond that's why it will be 1000 t by 2 similarly here it will be 1000 t by 4 for the second case so after solving it it will give the conversion as a y a of t is nothing but what so the value 3 cos 500 pi t minus 2 sin 750 pi t so thank you everyone thank you very much Next time we will concentrate on the other parts of the DSP.